Will Dr. Rosina Beer, uh, M. Beerbaum please come forward to the President's desk to sign the roll book and then receive a formal welcome from the President. Mr. President, I have the honor to present Rosina M. Beerbaum, Roy F. Western Chair in Natural Economics, School of Public Policy, University of Maryland, and Professor of Natural Resources and Environmental Policy at the University of Michigan. Rosina Beerbaum is an exceptional ecologist, excelling at the environment science policy interface, particularly on climate change, adaptation, and development issues. She has been a world leader in defining the science and practice of adaptation to climate change for 30 years, long before most of acknowledge the need for that. She's led numerous successful efforts in innovative design and conduct of integrated assessment to inform important national and international environmental policies. Beerbaum has comprehensively synthesized various sources of knowledge, identified important research directions, and influenced actions of Congress, the White House, the UN, World Bank, philanthropy, and the Global Environment Facility. Her research and public service in the legislative and executive branches of government have greatly improved understanding of multiple <clears throat> environmental stressors, developed core national indicators to characterize the health of the nation's ecosystems, incorporated resilience research into the U.S. Global Change Research Program, enhanced cross-agency monitoring, and made ecosystem services valuation a national priority. Turn around here. By the authority and in the name of the American Philosophical Society held at Philadelphia for promoting useful knowledge, I do admit you a member thereof. Congratulations. <laughs> now we, yeah, now we, we return. Got it. Will Dr. Sandra Diaz please come forward to the President's desk to sign the roll book and then receive a formal welcome from the President. Mr. President, I have the honor to present Sandra Diaz, Professor of Ecology at Universidad Nacional de Cordoba, Argentina, and Senior Principal Researcher at the Multidisciplinary Institute of Plant Biology, National County, National Council of Scientific and Technical Research, Argentina. Sandra Diaz has made out an outstanding contribution to the understanding of the role that biodiversity plays in the benefits that humankind derives from nature. She has broken new ground in ecology several times concerning the links between functional diversity, ecosystem properties, their benefits to society, and global environmental change. As a scholar, she pioneered the concept and empirical implementation of functional trait diversity. As a scientific leader, she spearheaded unprecedented large-scale initiatives in the area of biodiversity and ecosystems in the face of global environmental change and their translation into policy and practical action. She has successfully designed and led large groups of scientists from different countries and backgrounds around the world and spearheaded scientific assessment initiatives from regional to global since the early 2000s. Most recently, she was co-chair of the IPBES Global Assessment, the first intergovernmental assessment of biodiversity, ecosystems, and their links to human well-being. By the authority and in the name of the American Philosophical Society held at Philadelphia for promoting useful knowledge, I do admit you a member thereof. Congratulations. Don't go away. We, yep, we, have, to, <laughs> we have to be photographed. Okay. Congratulations. Will Mr. Peter J. Doherty Please come forward to the President's desk 
to sign the roll book and then receive a formal welcome from the President. Mr. President, I have the honor to present Peter J. Doherty, Director of the APS Press of the American Philosophical Society, <laughs> former Director of Princeton University Press and Fox Family Pavilion Scholar and Distinguished Senior Fellow at the University of Pennsylvania. Peter Doherty is the leading scholarly publisher of his generation. As director, he made the Princeton University Press the preeminent university press in the English-speaking world. Together with an impressive group of colleagues whom he hired and nurtured, he acquired and brought to print extraordinary titles in many fields of scholarly publishing, all told a significant share of the most important books published worldwide in the last 15 years. Before that, as group publisher for the Social Sciences and Senior Economics Editor of the Press, he personally built the leading lists in scholarly publishing in the fields of economics and higher education. As editor-at-large of the Press, Doherty built a highly ambitious list of important titles in higher education, many of them original and compelling books that he has imagined from the ground up. Now, he has joined the American Philosophical Society as director of our publication department for the last year and let's hope a good chunk of next year. <laughs> Renamed the APS Press and is working to transform its operations and goals in partnership with the University of Pennsylvania Press. Peter. By the authority and in the name of the American Philosophical Society held at Philadelphia for promoting useful knowledge, I do admit you a member thereof. Thank Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Will Dr. Vladimir Kuchera please come forward to the president's desk to sign the roll book and then receive a formal welcome from the president. Mr. President, I have the honor to present Vladimir Kuchera, Vice Director, Professor, and Distinguished Researcher at the Czech Institute of Informatics, Robotics, and Cybernetics at Czech Technical University, Prague, and Scientist Emeritus at the Academy of Sciences of the Czech Republic. In light of the current conflict in Central Europe, Dr. Kuchera's pioneering research and then his leadership of the Czech Academy of Sciences in the 1990s are particularly significant. The best known result of Vladimir Kuchera's work is the parameterization of all controllers that stabilize a given system frequently referred to as the Eula Kuchera parameterization. Kuchera discovered necessary and sufficient conditions for the existence <laughs> of extremal non-negative definite steady state solutions of Riccati equations in terms of stabiliz stabilizability and observability. Further, he classified the set of all non-negative definite steady state solutions and showed that the set is a lattice. Kuchera's latest contribution is the discovery of the stability-preserving Morse normal form, which is the canonical form of linear systems with respect to the group comprising stability-preserving state feedback, stability-preserving output injection, and input-output and state coordinate, coordinate <coughs> transformations, and which shows them completely invariant under the action of this transformation group. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> By the authority and in the name of the American Philosophical Society, held at Philadelphia for promoting useful knowledge, I do admit you a member thereof. Congratulations. Let's <laughs> <laughs> turn and we'll be Congratulations. Turn yeah. yep. Done. Thank you. Thank you. Will Dr. Wai Yi Li please come forward to the president's desk to sign the roll book and then receive a formal welcome from the president. 
Mr. President, I have the honor to present Wai Yi Li, 1879 Professor of Chinese Literature at Harvard University. In over a dozen authored or edited books and 60 plus articles and chapters, Wai Yi Li has long established herself as one of the most widely read and admired scholars of pre-modern Chinese literature. Commanding texts from more than 2,000 years of literary and cultural history, mm. but particularly the late imperial era, her work has embraced such disparate topics as early history and historiography, national and personal trauma, traditional fiction and drama, courtesans' memoirs, material culture, love, disillusionment, and the psychology of cultural keywords. Her writing combines careful philology, critical sophistication, plus abiding concern for and attention to human fallibility. Exercising broad influence internationally, she is a sought-after speaker on three continents and has been the chief organizer of several important collaborative projects. She is the first woman sinologist to be awarded a chaired professorship in Harvard's century-old East Asian Languages and Civilizations Department. By the authority and in the name of the American Philosophical Society, held at Philadelphia for promoting useful knowledge, I do admit you a member thereof. Congratulations. <laughs> Can you get photographed? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations again. <laughs> Will Dr. Tanya Marie Lerman please come forward to the president's desk to sign the roll book and then receive a formal welcome from the president. Mr. President, I have the honor to present Tanya Marie Lerman, Albert Ray Lang Professor of Anthropology at Stanford University. Tanya Lerman calls herself a cognitive anthropologist. She tries to understand how and why people hold the beliefs <laughs> they hold and how certain beliefs come to make sense within a given cultural context. Lerman has conducted ethnographic research in religious communities ranging from the Parsis of post-colonial India to the Vineyard Church in Chicago. In Pers Persuasions of the Witch's Craft, she startled readers by showing how middle-class Londoners came to practice ritual magic. While in When God Talks Back, she took on American evangelicals asking how God becomes real to new converts. Her ongoing work explores cross-cultural cross differences among schizophrenics and intriguingly asks how the delusional voices they hear compare with voices encountered in spiritual practice. Lerman is a sophisticated theorist, well-versed in anthropology, psychology, and religious studies, yet also an engaging, accessible writer whose work speaks to a broad public. Her book prizes are legion. <laughs> Tanya. By the authority and in the name of the American Philosophical Society, held at Philadelphia for promoting useful knowledge. I do admit you a member thereof. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Who's that, yes? Will Professor Dorothy E. Roberts please come forward to the president's desk to sign the roll book and re then receive a formal welcome from the president. Mr. President, I have the honor to present Dorothy E. Roberts, 14th Penn Integrates Knowledge Professor, George A. Weiss University Professor of Law and Sociology, Raymond Pace and Sa Sadie Tanner Bussell Alexander Professor of Civil Rights and Professor of Africana Studies, University of Pennsylvania. Dorothy Roberts is the founding director of the University of Pennsylvania's program on race, science, and society. She works at the intersection of law, social justice, 
science, and health, focusing on social justice issues in policing, family regulation, science, medicine, and bioethics. She's written extensively on the interplay of gender, race, and class in legal issues. Noteworthy among her studies are those of community-level effects of concentrated child welfare involvement in African-American neighborhoods and race consciousness in biomedicine, law, and social policy. Her book, Killing the Black Body, received the Gustavus Myers Center for the Study of Bigotry and Human Rights Book Award and the Radcliffe Graduate Society Medal. Shattered Bonds, the Color of Child Welfare, received the American Professional Society on the Abuse of Children's Outstanding Achievement of Cultural Competency in Child Maltreatment, Prevention, and Intervention Award. By the authority and in the name of the American Philosophical Society held at Philadelphia for promoting useful knowledge, I do admit you a member thereof. Congratulations. <laughs> Just wait here. Yeah, wait here. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Will Dr. Emery N. Brown please come forward to the president's desk to sign the roll book and then receive a formal welcome from the president. Mr. President. I have the honor to present Emory Brown, Edward, Edward Hood Taplin, Professor of Medical Engineering and of Computational Neuroscience, Professor of Health Sciences and Technology, Investigator, Pickauer Center for Learning and Memory, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and Warren M. Zeppel, Professor of Anesthesia at Math Massachusetts General Hospital. <laughs> Emory Brown is a statistician anesthesiologist who has made fundamental contributions to neuroscience data analysis research and to defining the neurophysiology of how anesthetics produce unconsciousness. Brown developed harmonic regression techniques to measure accurately the period of the human circadian clock and to characterize its phase shift response to bright light. He developed point process and state space methods to dynamically decode spatial location represented in the ensemble spiking activity of the rodent hippocampus and to track the co-evolution of hippocampal spiking activity and performance in non-human primates during behavioral learning. His system's neuroscience framework for anesthetic action reveals that anesthetics produce unconsciousness by generating highly structured extracellular current oscillations in brain circuits that impair normal communication. Brown's framework has produced novel approaches to EEG-based brain monitoring during surgery, closed-loop anesthesia delivery systems, neurophysiologically based anesthetic management strategies and techniques to awaken patients after anesthesia. By the authority and in the name of the American Philosophical Society held at Philadelphia for promoting useful knowledge, I do admit you a member thereof. Congratulations. Congratulations. We need to go over and have a yes, little they, picture they they face, yeah, Stand here, we face the camera. Thanks. Will Ms. Ellen R. Cohn please come forward to the president's desk to sign the roll book and then receive a formal welcome from the president. Mr. President, I have the honor to present Ellen R. Cohn, Editor-in-Chief of the Papers of Benjamin Franklin and Senior Research Scholar in the Department of History at Yale University. Ellen Cohn has devoted a career to editing Benjamin Franklin's papers. 
an undertaking founded by the American Philosophical Society and published by the Yale University Press. Her research in American and European archives has uncovered documents that demonstrate the significance of Franklin's printing activities in France and his place in the transatlantic network of natural philosophers. She comprehends the multiplicity of his interests from electricity, the mastodon, the aurora borealis, and the Gulf Stream to Native American vocabularies. Franklin's reputation in the European scientific community enabled his successful <laughs> diplomatic career. Cohen, Cohn, sorry, lived with, that's in quotations, Franklin from... <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Quotes lived with, end quote, Franklin from May 1777 when America was running out of funds for the war until the fall of 1784 when the peace treaty was, sat, was ratified. She narrates Franklin's life, discusses the country during a critical time, and establishes the APS. She's built an outstanding editorial team for 20 volumes of the papers of Benjamin Franklin. By the authority and in the name of the American Philosophical Society held at Philadelphia for promoting useful knowledge, I do admit you a member thereof. Congratulations. <laughs> well, we gotta have Ben in the picture too, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Will Dr. Matthew Desmond please come forward to the president's desk to sign the roll book and then receive a formal welcome from the president? Mr. President, I have the honor to present Matthew Desmond, Maurice P. During Professor of Sociology at Princeton University. Matthew Desmond has spent decades drilling into one of the most difficult problems faced by the poor and near poor in the United States, eviction. His Pulitzer Prize winning book, Evicted, argues that we have failed to fully grasp the role housing plays in the creation of poverty. His work tells the stories of families and landlords who spend their lives straddling the line between solvency and the street, documenting the desperate choices families make out of fear of eviction and the pain left in the wake of losing a home. With a keen eye and a sharp pen, Desmond highlights the patterns of economic change and social neglect that have left America's vulnerable at risk. Desmond has built an eviction lab at Princeton, which has published the first ever data set on evictions in the United States in order to serve neighborhoods advocates, and policymakers, Desmond continues to overturn conventional wisdom on the chain of events from eviction to poverty and to document the consequences of eviction on racial and economic inequality. Desmond's new book, Poverty by America, about which he will speak this afternoon, identifies and explicates the many structural features of American society that keep the poor poor and the rich rich. By the authority and in the name of the American Philosophical Society held at Philadelphia for promoting useful knowledge, I do admit you a member thereof. Congratulations. Yeah, see you later. Will Dr. David L. Donahoe please come forward to the president's desk to sign the roll book and then receive a formal welcome from the president. Mr. President, I have the honor to, to present David L. Donahoe 
Ann T. and Robert M. Bass, Professor in the Humanities and Sciences and Professor of Statistics at Stanford University. Dramatic developments in technology present fundamental new challenges in theoretical and applied mathematical statistics. David Donahoe has played a major role in building powerful new mathematical and statistical tools to deal with these problems, ranging from how best to extract information from large data sets in high dimensions and how to deal with contamination by noise. His work provides fast, efficient, and often optimal algorithms that are founded on rigorous mathematical analysis. He introduced many now standard techniques that overcome difficulties caused by noise with very little loss of efficiency or reliability. Along the way, he demonstrated the power of the mathematical theory of wavelets in dealing with such problems in statistics. He also developed efficient techniques for sparse representation and recovery in large data sets. By the authority and in the name of the American Philosophical Society held at Philadelphia for promoting useful knowledge, I do admit you a member thereof. Congratulations. The photographers always tell me to take off this name tag when I, when I do this thing, and, um, well, I forgot. <laughs> Will Lenny Vestergaard Howell please come forward to the president's desk to sign the roll book and then receive a formal welcome from the president? Mr. President, I have the honor to present Lenny Vestergaard Howe, Mallinckrodt Professor of Physics and of Applied Physics at Harvard University. Lenny Howe created a new paradigm for quantum control and interconversion of light and matter. This really blows me away, by the way. <laughs> in, in 1999, she led a team who slowed light to 38 miles an hour by manipulating cold atoms with laser beams. Two years later, they halted light altogether and then restarted it on its way. In 2007, her team stopped and extinguished a light pulse in a Bose-Einstein condensate, then subsequently resurrected it from a totally different uh, BRC in a different location. In the process, information carried by the light pulse by the light pulse was converted into a perfect matter, quote, imprint, end quote, then revived as light. The matter imprints can be trapped for many seconds and manipulated. Her work has inspired many other physicists as well as engineers pursuing possibilities for ultra-low energy optical information processing in telecommunications. By the authority and in the name of the American Philosophical Society, held at Philadelphia for promoting useful knowledge, I do admit you a member thereof. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Will Dr. Susan Stewart please come forward to the president's desk to sign the roll book? and then receive a formal welcome from the president. Mr. President, I have the honor to present Susan Stewart, poet and Avalon Foundation University professor in the Humanities Emerita, professor of English Emerita, and associate member Department of Art and Archaeology at Princeton University. Susan Stewart is one of the most prominent and original critics active today. Her early books, 
nonsense, <laughs> and on longing, take topics like the miniature, think of Gulliver's Travels, and show us what changes in scale, time, and space really signify. These distinctive studies won Stuart a MacArthur Fellowship. Poetry and the Fate of the Senses is one of the key studies of poetics from Orpheus, Orpheus and Vico to the present. And her most recent scholarly book, The Ruins, asks the difficult question, why do ruins, both physical and in literature, interest so much, interest us so much, and what do they mean? This study, like all Stuart's scholarly work, covers material from ancient cultures down to the 18th century in England and beyond. She's also known for her art criticism and is a well-known and prize-winning poet whose intimate ecological poems have received much praise. By the authority and in the name of the American Philosophical Society held at Philadelphia for promoting useful knowledge, I do admit you a member thereof. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs>